collection specialist at the Chisholm Trail Museum. Um, about us, uh, you know, aside from football rivalries, um, <laughs> we are located along the historic Chisholm Trail in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Um, our exhibits focus mainly on early Kingfisher history, commerce and industry. We have a bunch of stuff about um, surveying, which I think, you know, <laughs> is kind of interesting to you. Um, and then we also have a bunch of uh, buildings. We have our Horizon Hill, the Sea Mansion, um, and we have our Pioneer Village. We have two cabins, a church, a bank, and a schoolhouse. And if that sounds practiced, it is because we say it to visitors every time they come in. Um, and so it's, we've got a whole bunch of stuff, but you know, a lot of our, a lot of our visitors are either from out of state or Kingfisher and the surrounding area, which is, you know, we're the county seat. So there's a lot of people who bring their school trips and, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. So the Meacham Photograph Collection was um, basically the life work of Eugene Meacham, a local photographer who did anything from family portraits to car accidents, um, <laughs> uh, random aerial flight photos, like you'll see a bunch of them throughout this. This is one of them. Um, in fact, every photo I think in the presentation is um, from the collection. Uh, so there's all sorts of photos. There's cheerleaders, there's you know any sort of thing to do with the schools, anything to do with, you know, there's some pictures of just churches, um, it, anything you can think of to deal with life in Kingfisher, he probably took a picture of. Um, and we're on box three of 100, so <laughs> we don't even know exactly what all is in all of these. And so, you know, uh, there's 100 boxes. When we first found this, they were all in their original photo, like, sleeves in uh, sewing pattern file cabinets. Um, I think there were, what, four of them or so? Like, there were a bunch of them. And so we had to take them out, put them all in boxes, um, make little finding aids for each box. Um, so we had a good idea of what was in them. And then recently we went and reorganized them so that they were in order. Um, so there's 100 boxes. Um, two of those boxes are a little bit lighter than the other ones, just because you, know, you can't make sure it fits in the entire box. Um, and there's <laughs> over 27,000 records. Now that's just like the person's name, um, you know, maybe my name's Taylor Stover, so maybe it was Stover. Um, in that folder, there might be 100 photos. So even though there's 27,000 records, there are even more photographs themselves, like a whole bunch. Like I said, we're only, we've been doing this for two years now, and we're only on box three of 100. So it's expansive. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's an idea of like the collection itself. Um, and then when it comes to the project, so when we got this and we got it organized and everything, we, we had to go and get the donor paperwork um, because we couldn't find that. <laughs> we don't even know if they did it originally, but we went ahead and reached out to the family and got that paperwork figured out, applied for grants, and we got the grant. So um, we pretty much did a whole bunch of stuff with that grant. We got our technology, so we got a new computer, we got the scanner, we got um, you know all the different hard drives, we got, what else, um, you know, the boxes, anything you could think of that had to do with this project we got. And then we hired our interns, so we had our one intern in the spring, which was Bradley, and then one intern in the summer, um, and I forgot her name, Jordan. Jordan, Jordan thank you. <laughs> that has been a while. Um, and so we had those interns come in and do those. Those were paid internships, which were paid for by that grant. Um, and then we had an index that I don't know if the studio or the photographer himself started making these, but they were all on index cards um, with the family's name and just various information. And so we took that existing index and our first step was to digitize that index. So um, we did that and that was actually in uh, March of 2020. And so COVID hit and that was the perfect project to be doing from home. <laughs> we would all take a little tiny file cabinet go home and type it all up and when we share it, we ended up with a big index which is a little inconsistent at times, um, <laughs> a little. Uh, there were times where, I don't know, later in the history, people just, he didn't keep all the photos or something because there's stuff on the index that we have and there's something that we don't have and, but we, we, we tackle that whenever we get to it. Um, and that's, that's pretty much a good overview of the entire collection and project. Um, I'm going to let these guys talk a little bit more about the project itself and their experience with it. Um, but if you have any 
questions about that part of the issue, like, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Taylor. Um, and so, uh, like Taylor said, through the grant that they, uh, they were rewarded, um, they had an uh, intern come in, and so I was the first intern. Um, and so they had already done a great job of organizing the photos into boxes um, as best as they could, because it was kind of a, it was hit or miss, as, as Taylor said. Um, and so I was tasked with then taking, or well, we all tasked, because it was a team effort. Um, but we were tasked with creating this finding aid. Um, and this became our master finding aid. Um, and so we went through, um, like Taylor said, took those note cards out. Um, and so a lot of the, we did run into a lot of the problem, problems with those. Um, they were note cards with names. Um, there were lost records, as Taylor mentioned. Um, note cards that were missing, um, whether they were taken out of the, the records or just lost in, through, through years. Um, there were duplicated numbers. Um, so over time, he, the photographer shot over 40 years. Um, when he got to the end of his series of numbers, he would just start over um, and duplicate numbers. Um, so that's created some, some fun issues. Um, there were repeated names um, because we're dealing with Kingfisher County. Um, there would be you know, one family name and it would represent that family from then on out for the next you know, 20, 30 years. And there'd be family photographs of different generations <coughs> represented uh, by just this one, one individual's name. Um, so that created some, some fun issues. Um, and then last but not least, there was just inconsistent info. Um, the photographer, when he was creating his records, uh, the bare minimum that was on each envelope or each note card would be a name and then a record number. Um, but outside of that, um, it, was, it was hit or miss on what was included. Um, sometimes <coughs> it didn't include what the photographs were. Um, you know, it could say, you know, high school graduation photo. Um, but outside of that, um, it was just very inconsistent, very hit or miss. Um, and so over 40 years, it, it created some, some interesting, um, interesting dynamics for us to work through. Um, in the end, I think it took us about um, four or five months. Um, I started in January of 2020, um, like Taylor mentioned, um, March 2020, <coughs> and that became our, our work from home project for the next few months. Um, and so by the time we went back to the office, I think in June, um, it was finally start, time to start scanning photographs. Um, we had compiled an Excel worksheet, um, and it's still growing at this point. We still frequently updated because, like Taylor said, we'll find records that were either not in the original records or just duplicated records, something along those lines. Um, and so I think the spreadsheet last I checked was up to like 11,000 or more, 13? Oh, more, more, okay. So it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a growing thing. Um, it, it continues to, to grow and morph. It's kind of a, a living finding aid at this point, we'll call it. Um, but it's been very useful for us. Um, and so um, it was something for us. Um, it gave us the opportunity to go through and create uniform accession numbers. Um, so like I said, they're inconsistent number, numbering through the years. So there were some numbers that were you know, just three digits long. We went through and made every, every number um, five digits long at least. Um, but that kind of takes me to, to my internship takeaway. So the, like I said, the big thing I did was, was create the finding aid. Um, and I only got to scan about, I think, 200 photos or so during my time. Um, but it, it left me with some lifelong impressions. Um, pay attention to the details um, and be able to read cursive. Um, he had some very terrible cursive handwriting. That, um, it, it was truly a team effort to, to, to read through some of those records. You know, we're, we're sending emails back and forth to each other, we're sending emails to uh, our director, Jason. Um, just a way to make sure that we had everything as, as accurate as we could. Um, but then kind of, you know, for me, it, it, it helped me develop professional museum skills. Um, it was a way to gain historic knowledge about a community in Oklahoma but it also allowed me to grow as a museum professional. I could you know, have these skills as a digiti as, through digitization, excuse me. I always struggle with that word. Um, and so it was just a way, like I said, I still use these skills today. Um, and so it was, it's come full circle now that I, I, it's just, it's something I kind of refer back to from time and time again. Um, and so just to kind of speak to the effectiveness of our finding aid, um, as you'll see there on the slide is a photo of a very young Father Stanley Rother. Um, and so my last day, I was, I was just 
looking through the finding aid and I noticed the Roker family name several times. Um, and so I, I conducted a search through the Excel spreadsheet that we put together. Um, I was able to find several records with uh, Father's family's name on it. Um, and so I was able to pull several envelopes and it took, I, it took some time because the boxes at that time were pretty heavy and they weren't the most organized. Um, they've since gone through and put it all in numeric order which has made finding things much easier. Um, but it took, you know, 20, 30 minutes. I was able to find several envelopes. Um, and these were one of the photos we scanned. Um, and that just kind of speaks to the effectiveness of, of the finding aid. Um, and it was, it's been really important for what, what the collection has been continued to be used for. Um, and so I'll turn it over to Kimberly um, and she'll, oh, Kathy, excuse me. I'll turn it over to Kathy um, and she'll kind of speak on that. So. Uh, I'm from Kingfisher, and so I have maybe a little different perspective. I've done a lot of the digitizing on the photographs, and it is every time I get to do it, it's a fun adventure because uh, it shows progress in our community. It shows the history of our community. Um, my parents are still living, and I will go to their house and say, okay, now tell me about, and they can tell me about that time that this happened or that, of course, Ace Hardware used to be a car dealership. Didn't you know that? <laughs> so we kind of have, it shows a history of the commerce of the area. It shows a history of the families in the area. It uh, shows a history of uh, fashion in the area. Um, we went from corsages for homecoming that were this big to maybe this big or non-existent. And so he, it was all documented through those photographs, and so it's really been interesting. Um, Mr. Meacham took photos of, he took mug shots. He did photographs for insurance companies of accidents. Uh, there were Christmas cards, you know, on this corner of this house or this family. So he kind of did a very wide spectrum of what he was photographing, but it all kind of shows like I said, a little bit of a progression. Um, in my family even, uh, there's a progression. I haven't run across my photos yet, but I ran across my brother's photo two weeks ago when he was nine months old. And I checked and sure enough, his senior photo is also in the collection. So that's not only a progression of the community, but also of community members. So it, it, uh, it's an adventure and it's a lot of fun. She's in my office and she's scanning, which is the collection space. But she'll turn and she'll go, oh man, I know this person and this, I didn't know there used to be this in Kingfisher, but it says it's in Kingfisher. Or, or she'll turn and she'll say, this looks like Watonga or something. <laughs> like she'll, she'll, she'll know where something is if it doesn't know. And so she's been really helpful with adding stuff like that to notes. Um, she also mentioned about, uh, you said Mr. Meacham used to have a program where you would pay for your family. He had a family plan, and so you, the family would pay, and so then you, you had a, a subscription, so many photographs, and so uh, you could kind of tell there may be three or four pictures from the same family right in a row in FRP, and I know, okay, family plan. They're at the end of their family plan time, and they needed to get several photographs taken. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's interesting, and, and our family, that's how we have it. Uh, my parents were on the family plan, and uh, so that's why my brother's nine-month-old picture is in there because we had that family plan. They were talking also about illegibility. Um, we still encounter that, of course, but sometimes it's a name that I go, oh, I know how to spell this, and I know who this is. So we can make some slight corrections as we go as well. Yeah, and sometimes there's corrections where we're not sure if we should change it, so we'll put it in the notes, or like, you know, if she's like, no, no, this is this person. Then we'll we'll find a way to like kind of edit that or you know it just depends on the, on the on the photo in question and like stuff like like she said FRP when we were both in those indexes together we had no idea what FRP meant <laughs> no idea but Kathy's like oh I know exactly what that means um, and we've had a couple other people volunteer like students or or um, retired teachers come in and, and volunteer whether for months or a day and like we just recently had a, a high school student come in and he was ecstatic. He wouldn't have his mom buy a flash drive. It was bright pink. He was a little embarrassed by it. And I was like, don't worry about it. It's, mm -hmm. it's pink. Who cares? Um, because he found his family, he searched his family. 
through my name, I've got a whole bunch of pictures, and I was like, you know, if you write down the number, um, next time you're here, we can scan those instead, because either way, we're getting photos scanned, um, and you can have a couple copies of those and take them to your family. He was, oh my gosh, this 16-year-old boy was so excited to go show his great-grandma the picture of her brother that she probably had, but he didn't know, <laughs> and so he was so excited, and you know, that's not the 16-year-old boy who's excited to be scanning photos and taking it home to show his grandma. <laughs> but yeah, so like, stuff like that is just, I don't know, people recognizing things that we don't because none of us are from Kingfisher. Um, it's just, it's really useful. Yeah. And fun. <laughs> oh, here are some photos from the oh, collection. Kathy, this there. is your brother, yeah, isn't it? That's my brother. Um, <laughs> And so just some, some pictures from the collection of Kingfisher throughout the years. Or like that Springer's one. I, we were like, Sprinters? And Kathy goes, no, no, that's Springer's. It's definitely Springer's. <laughs> um, so I um, have also been involved with this project um, since 2018 when we accessioned it. Um, and I deal with a lot of the community research requests. So people come in and they say, oh, the class of 1972 is having a reunion. Do you have those pictures? And I'm like, Probably. Um, let's see if we can find them for you. Um, and so like Bradley mentioned at first, um, the collection was not at all organized. Uh, we have recently gone back and organized all of those in numeric order. So that now instead of taking two days searching through 100 boxes to try and find one photo, it takes us 10 minutes because we know exactly what box it's actually going to be in. Um, we've had family reunions come through and say, we're hosting our family reunion in a couple of weeks and we don't know what kind of pictures you have of our family, but you know, surely there's something in there. Um, and so if they give us their, you know, their last name, maybe the first names of a couple members of their family, um, we can go in and, and pull those photos for them. Um, one of the women's groups that meets at the museum, um, one of the ladies came up to me and said, Eugene Meacham took our wedding photos um, I don't have a copy of that photo. Um, our copy was destroyed in a flood. Um, my um, parents-in-law, their copy was destroyed. Um, and so I don't have my wedding photo. Um, but I know that, you know, Mr. Meacham took those. Do you think that it's somewhere in the collection? And so I said, we'll find out, you know. And so uh, I looked for her name through our um, index. And sure enough, that wedding photo that she hadn't seen in 30 something years was there um, and so she was able to get a copy of that um, and so that's that's one of my favorite stories that's come from the community research and things like that that um, you know that's very personal it's not just a historical record it's someone's you know not just their family history but their own personal history um, we something that comes up a lot someone will say hey this is a photo of my family um, and sometimes the photos are damaged. So you can see on the edge of this photo on the screen, um, it has some maybe some water damage or something. We don't retouch any of the photos. However the photo is in the collection, we scan it as is and we, we give it to them. Um, and so some of the photos, like I said, are damaged. Some of them are on like, uh, we have some scans of old glass negatives um, that um, are cracked or broken. Um, we just, we provide them as is. We don't do any touch-ups or anything like that. Um, this is an example of our index. Um, so um, this is from uh, 2020, early on in our digitization efforts. Um, we go through and whatever the index card said, you know, we would put that number. Uh, we would put the name that was listed on the index card exactly as it was listed. And as has been mentioned, the Handwriting was not always super legible. Um, it was many different people's handwriting through the years on the sets of index cards. And so sometimes we had to do our best to guess at what the name said. Um, but we always tried to write it exactly as it was written on the card, even if we thought, that's a strange way to spell that. You know, like she said, you know, we're not from Kingfisher. We don't know these people. And so maybe that is how their name is spelled. Um, and so we, we put the date, whatever the description says. Um, and uh, like um, they mentioned, the descriptions sometimes were very helpful and sometimes not very helpful. Sometimes they say, graduation photo, class of 1972. And it's like, okay, that, that's helpful. Sometimes it just says, baby. And you're like, well, 
it is a baby. We don't know what baby, because again, this is just, you know, the whole family is on this one index card. Um, and so if this, if these people have, you know, four kids and all of the photos just say baby, a lot of the time it's different babies, but we have no way of differentiating, you know, who these people are. Um, and uh, so these are some of the photos that um, I've scanned through our research requests. Um, and uh, we put this stamp on the front of an image um, when people are requesting photos so that they can see what the image is because we don't have um, the scans of the photos available for the public to see um, unless they specifically request them yet. And so um, they can go in and look at that index um, sheet that is online and they can say, oh, this number has you know, my family's name. I want to know what that picture is. We can pull that, we can scan it, and if they want to purchase a copy of it, we can send them that preliminary, you know, with the stamp that says, this is what the photo is, and if you want to purchase it, we will take this stamp off, <laughs> and you can, you can purchase it for your own use. Um, we have also used them for our social media. Um, they've come in really handy. Um, Taylor, for our truck wagon gathering, um, edited this cute little boy in his phone to um, be appropriate for our event. Um, and we get a lot of engagement um, on our Facebook page from these um, photos of the community. People will say, oh, that's, that's me, or that's my grandma, or that's my parents' wedding, you know. Um, and so that also helps us identify some of the things that, you know, we're not sure they're not labeled very well or whatever. Um, the community has been very helpful in helping us identify a lot of the buildings and things like that um, that, are, that are in these images. Um, as was mentioned, it's not just graduation photos, family portraits. Um, he did photos for the insurance companies, um, for the police department. Um, and so you can see the crumpled car that was from an insurance report. Um, <coughs> the man on the bottom, his face and his hands, he was injured in a crash. And so they documented that for the insurance. Um, this one on the bottom left, Kingfisher, has a flooding issue. <laughs> and so that is a field that is completely flooded. Um, it <coughs> kind of looks like a swimming pool. Um, and then my favorite are three criminals who are handcuffed in a very um, confusing way. Uh, <laughs> but there are a lot of really cool, you never know what you're going to find when you go through the collection. Um, some more. Um, I really enjoyed these. Um, We've got, you know, a 4-H photo, a photo with an airplane, um, looks like a, maybe a, a beauty portrait. Um, just all sorts of very interesting things. Sometimes they're um, candid shots from events in the community. Sometimes they're portrait, um, studio portraits. Uh, just all sorts of, of interesting different pieces of, of Kingfisher and the surrounding area's history. Anyone has any questions? 